Today on Joe's Geek Show, we're going to be talking about Superman and Lois, Episode 1. What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series where we talk comics. And before we get started, if you're new and like to support the channel, you can do so by clicking that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and sharing. And with that, CCW, that wasn't so hard after all. So yeah, we have a brand new Superman show that's maybe, sort of, kind of a spinoff of Supergirl, but we'll get more into that later in the video. Instead, let's just start with our main cast, which is the Kent family. We've got Tyler Hawkland returning as Superman, we've got Betty Tulick as Lois Lane, Jordan Elsas as John Kent, and Alexander Garland as Jordan Kent. And in like typical CW fashion, this is both a superhero show as well as a family drama. We've got story points like Clark learning how to both be Superman and balance his duties as a father, Lois trying to be the glue and voice of reason for the family when things get tough, struggles of what it's like to be raising teenagers as well as being a teenager, particularly when it comes to the brotherhood of both Jordan and John where one seems to be perfect and good at everything while Jordan Kent, he's got a social anxiety disorder, he doesn't feel like he belongs anywhere and is also really good at playing Raiden in Injustice. And the basic outline of the episode is that, you know, while Superman's out being Superman, Martha Kent sadly dies, and he has to return to Smallville to have a funeral, and then things start to happen. For one, both Jordan and John are involved in an accident in the barn where a whole bunch of metal pipes fall on them, and they're unharmed for the most part. Okay, they did have a, like, I think the paramedics had a couple of bruises, but really, they should have been dead. And Lois and Clark also find out that Martha Kent took out a special mortgage on her house so that she could get money to help the community of Smallville, like helping neighbors keep their farms. Which leads to a discussion between Lois and Clark about whether or not they want to try to pay off the mortgage and keep the house, or if they're just gonna let it go. When Clark realizes that the reason his mother had been calling him so much is because she's been trying to get him and their family back to Smallville. Maybe not to live, but at least for a visit. But hey, why not decide to live there, right? All the while, Lois starts to kind of uncover maybe a elaborate conspiracy going on with the guy Morgan Edge, the guy who had bought the Daily Planet at some point before this episode started, and oh yeah, Clark Kent lost his job. Which makes me wonder how they're actually gonna go ahead and, you know, pay off that mortgage, because let's be honest, Superman's not gonna rob a bank. If only he were best friends with a multi-billionaire. Okay, I get it, Batwoman has established that Bruce Wayne went missing in this universe, but as I'm about to get into a little bit later, I'm still not sure if we're even in that universe. But to continue on, we've also got this guy who, at first when I saw the trailer, said looked a bit like Black Noir from The Boys, but as soon as I got a good full look at him, I just gotta say, yeah, no, I was wrong. It's totally Doom Slayer from the Doom games. Because it turns out that Doom Slayer has been targeting all these nuclear power plants, and he really wants to see what Superman is made of such a time where he feels comfortable enough to fight him, which we also do get in this episode. And Superman gets his ass handed to him. He doesn't seem to be as fast or as strong or as smart as this guy in the Doom Slayer outfit. But who is he? Well, we do get that answer a little bit later in the episode as well. And now comes the part of the video where I'm going to be breaking down my positives and my negatives. Starting with the positives, because, you know, let's talk about the good things. I really like the tone of the show. It's given me a vibe of being a mashup between both Smallville and Man of Steel. Because while it's giving me that nice, quaint, familiar Smallville-styled feeling, it also has this very just good-looking cinematography that's, you know, a bit more cinematic. It's got a very good color palette, great camera work. Even to a degree, Emmanuel Chiriki's version of Lana Lang does remind me a bit of Kristen Crook. And the overall higher quality look of this show is really to its benefit. As far as the performances go, I also really like those. Uh, Tyler Hawkland was actually a casting that I've been a fan of since he premiered in Supergirl Season 2. Didn't always like what they did with him in Supergirl, but I did like him in the role. 
Betsy Tulik also does really well as Lois Lane. She does exuberate that strong, independent attitude and go-getter type that I've come to enjoy about Lois Lane in general. She's tough, but not bitchy, strong, but not pushy. And overall, it comes across as a very balanced character. When it comes to the relationship between John and Jordan, you know, I do feel like these two are brothers, and there's definitely a sibling rivalry that's kind of present, where, you know, one is always seemingly perfect, and the other, he's just a gamer. And I do think it was a very interesting approach that they took with giving Jordan the superpowers versus John, though I do still think that John might get them a little bit later because, let's be honest, John was the original son before the whole crisis thing and they ended up getting twins out of the whole thing. John Kent, superpowers, come on. You can't do me like this, EW. But ultimately, I did like where that ended up uh, taking the relationship, particularly between Clark and Jordan, because Clark really had trouble connecting with his son, specifically Jordan, who felt like such an outsider, and really, in a way, is more of a mirror image of Clark than John is, because John is very popular, he seems well-adjusted, and does seem to be taking it well that he wasn't the one that ended up with the superpowers. And I do like the note that the show ends on with Clark promising to help out Jordan any way he can to get a handle on things, on these new powers, and just trying to also be the best father that he can, much like Jonathan Kent. There's also some great Easter eggs in this show, like actually starting with Tyler Hoechlin wearing the old Fleischer suit. I never thought I would see that in live action, but damn it, I'm glad they did it. We got Superman cooling down a nuclear power plant with a piece of frozen lake, much like he did in Superman 3. And then we can't forget to mention the old Schuster Mines, which was a direct reference to one of Superman's creators, Joe Schuster. But I do have some questions and quite a few gripes because it's not a perfect pilot, of course. For one, I'm wondering where does this fit in with the other CW shows and when, really? And this is where I start to even wonder and ask questions of, are we even still on Prime Earth? Because of course what I noticed is there was no mention of the Crisis on Infinite Earth events as Superman and Lois don't even bring it up once, as that was the event that led them to having twins versus just one son. No mention of Supergirl or anything like that, because you know, if there's a nuclear power plant going off, I would figure, you know, she might show up or there would at least be some kind of passing mention, but no, nothing. And this could be a reach, but I do look at Sam Lane, who has been completely recast, and overall also just has a different attitude from what I'm familiar with on the Supergirl show, because that version of Sam Lane was just an utter douche nozzle. Whereas this one's still that, you know, a hard military leader, but he really is and seems to be supportive of Superman. He's constantly coming to him saying, hey, we got some new intel on, you know, the guy that's been attacking nuclear reactors, you know, you might need to get out there and do some stuff. But ultimately also seems to respect the wishes of both his daughter and his son-in-law. Also look at our wannabe Doomslayer guy who, after he takes his helmet off, we don't get to see his face, but he's labeled and called by the ship Captain Luther, which isn't really a huge reveal and was kind of actually disappointed by it but i do notice one thing it's not john crier because he ultimately was the lex luther of supergirl and the you know greater cw universe and i feel like maybe this version of lex luther is going to be our link to the multiverse and the explanation of why you know some things are probably different because he does reference that you know he comes from a place that's uh completely gone his planet's gone and you know now he's here testing superman so if i had to guess of course it's a lex luther from a different earth and because of the events of crisis his earth went away and he ended up on this one so i mean is it possible we could see maybe john crier's lex luther team up with this one i don't know but it could be an interesting concept but i would ultimately say my least favorite part of the show was right after this Luther fought Superman and he stabbed him with kryptonite and Superman was falling towards the ground and Superman just pulls it out like it's nothing, tosses it to the side and is back to full power within just mere seconds. Overall, it came off as a bit of a cheat to me because I think it would have been interesting to end the show on that particular note with 
where Superman falls, hits the earth, you know, he's got the, he's got the kryptonite uh, stab wound and stuff, and you had the incident that happened with uh, both John and Jordan at uh, the mines there, where Jordan's power is manifested, and a big explosion happens. And maybe Lois had to learn simultaneously that there was an accident with her sons, as well as then maybe see her husband on TV practically dead. A bit dramatic, but would have been one hell of a cliffhanger. But ultimately, what I came to really enjoy about this episode more than anything else is it just sought to entertain me first and foremost. And I had a good time with it. I hope it continues to have this level of quality moving forward, and I'm looking forward to episode two. But what did you think about Superman and Lois episode one, this spectacular two hour premiere? Did you like it? Did you not? Please tell me what you think in the comment section below. And if you liked this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. All right, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.